let's continue talking about inheritance. And let me pause just for a second here. I'm turning up the microphone there setting. Okay, so here's what we would like to implement. In a store, we have regular items. They have a name, a st stock keeping unit, also called a SKU, and a price. And here are our getters. There's only a setter for the price. Once you establish the name and the SKU for an item, they never change. We'll also have a method for purchase. You give it a quantity and it tells you how much it costs to purchase that amount of the item. And then a two string and an equals method. Sale item is going to inherit from item. And the extra thing that it allows is a discount. It has its own constructor and you can get and set the discount. It also has a purchase method, which is going to be different from this one because it takes the discount um, as part of its calculation. And it also has its own two string and equals method. So there's our plan. Now let's go here and take a look at the code. And here's the item.java. There's nothing particularly new here. Um, when I have the setter for the price, by the way, I put an absolute value to make sure that we um, don't end up with a negative price. And I probably should do the absolute value of quantity here, but let's overlook that for now. And here's my two string. I can um, get the um, name, the skew, and the price. And for equals, the names have to be equal, the skews have to be equal, and the prices have to be equal. Uh, I guess I should do a real quick test here. Let's do this as save as, and let's call it um, quick item test.java. And that will be um, So let's have an item and let's call it, oh, I don't know, um, water bottle. And that's going to be a new item. The string name is going to be water bottle. The SKU is going to be WB0101. And the price is going to be, let's say, $5.98. And let's print out water bottle. And by the way, I guess we may as well compile this to make sure it compiles OK. Excellent. Let's go back here and let's compile again. Perfect. Just want to make sure it worked. And let's compile this and run it. Okay, looks like it's doing that properly. Let's just check here. Um, double cost equals purchase of five. And this is an out dot print line of, well, let's do a printf. Purchasing five percent sign. S costs dollar sign percent dot two F and inside S I'm going to say water bottle dot get name and then water bottle. Well, it's called cost. <laughs> I already have it there. And let's compile that. Well, that's exciting. Oh, yes, that's right. Because I have to say water bottle dot purchase. Five. There, that's much better. Okay, so wonderful. We know that our irregular items work. Now it's time to go to the sale item, and now we're going to come into some problems. So my Im immediate instinct is to have the name, skew, price, and discount, and set the name to this dot name, skew, and price. And for getting the discount, I'll return this dot discount. Setting the discount, I make sure that it never goes above 100%. You can't have more than 100% discount. And then my purchase will be the price times the quantity times one minus the discount over 100. And to string, I'm going to give the name, the skew, and the price. 
and then also what the discount is as a percentage. To make it a percentage, by the way, I have to multiply by 100. And for equality, I forgot to do that one, so I'll talk about it later. And all of a sudden, I get all sorts of errors here. And the problem is, um, okay, first of all, let's see what line five is. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure why I'm getting this error message, but here's the real problem that we have. And that is, I can't set the name. It has private access. Same here and same here. I can't say something like this dot set name of name. That won't work either. If I try and do that, it will say, I'm sorry, there is no such thing as set name. Remember, we never provided one. So we're stuck, it would appear. Now, the question is, how do we solve this problem? The way we solve this problem is with a special keyword called super. What we will do is we will call the super class constructor and give it the name, the SKU, and the price. It's okay for us to do this because the constructor is public. So that means we should be able to do that just fine. If I now compile it, I still have all my other problems, but I've solved this one. When you use the super keyword, very important, the super keyword in a constructor must be the first item other than comments. So let's uh, open up our notes here in a constructor you can call the super class constructor with the super keyword but it must be the first non-comment line in the constructor i don't know why i'm having trouble typing constructor today Now, here we have the same problem in line 21. We can't get to price and we can't get to quantity directly. Why? Because they're private inside of item. So we're going to sneak around that. We do have something public that will give us the price. It's this method. We do have something that will get the quantity. Uh, did I even put that in there? Oh, no, there is no quantity. Excuse me. We can get the price, we can get the name, and we can get the skew by calling the getter methods. Those are all public. So again, we have no direct access to these private attributes, but we do have access to them through their getters. And that's what we're going to have to do here inside of sale item. So instead of price, we're going to have to say this dot get price. It's inherited and it'll work. And we have one minus discount times 100. Let's compile that and see if that error message goes away. Perfect. We'll have to say get name, get skew, and get price. We have no direct access to them, but we have access to their getters. And here I already did it in equals. So I say this dot get name is other get name. So for the, again, I need the getters for the name, skew and price. For the discount, because that belongs to me, I can get to it directly, no problem. So let's do something here and let's um, do something like, oh, I don't know, um, sale item, call it, let's say headphones. And that's going to be a new sale item with it's going to be um, boom, earpiece headphones. And they're going to be um, EH202202. And let's have them priced at $34.20. And let's have a 10% discount on them. 
Let's do a system out dot print line of headphones. And let's say the cost is going to be um, headphones dot purchase of, let's do 10 of them. I know that that will work out okay because we can multiply 34.2 times 10 in our heads. And it's going to be headphones dot yeah, name and our cost. And let's just check to see if that works. Lovely. And is that about right? Well, let's go and um, fire up J shell here for a moment and find out. And so three hundred forty-two dollars times zero point nine. Um, hold on, it was thirty-four dollars and twenty, right? Mm, that's interesting. Three hundred forty-one dollars and sixty-six cents. What am I doing wrong here? Okay, I've got to think about this. Okay, something went wrong here in this cost. I have something wrong with my calculation because 10 of these should cost $34.20 and there's no way I should get $341.66 off of this. So what am I doing wrong? Well, let's go back and look at our sale item.java and look, let's look at this. Oh, there's the problem I'm dividing by 100. I don't have to divide by 100, it already is a decimal. Let's compile that again here. And let's come back here and let's rerun it. And there we go. Now, <laughs> excuse me, now we have the correct answer. Well, this is very interesting because I believe the book has it wrong. Because in the book, I have the code as um oh no, I haven't written the code. Okay. So the code is right. All right, I'm ha I am happy now. I'm sorry that <laughs> that just knocked me totally off track. Okay, fine. We've got our inheritance. We have super, and that's just super. Now there is one thing that we can improve here. Let me close this off. By the way, I don't need it. And let's come back here. Let's take a look back here at sale item. You'll notice that this is the price times the quantity times one minus discount. And in regular item, when we had purchase, it was quantity times price, which is the same as price times quantity because commutativity. It turns out that we can save ourselves a little bit of code here by saying... Super dot purchase. So there's another use of the super. It says call the purchase method from the super class and give it the quantity. Let's compile that and let's check to make sure that, that still works. Compile this and run it. And yep, we get our $307.80. Another place that we can use super to save ourselves a little bit of extra code is here inside of string.format. Instead of having to do this dot get name, this dot get is skew, this dot get this dot get price. Let's do super dot to string, which will return us one string. And then the discount because super.toString will give us 
the name, the SKU, and the price, which is what we wanted. Let's compile that. And as you see, everything still works great. Oh, let me see if there's another place that I can use super. Oh, yes, I can. All of this code is exactly the same as this code here. That means I can say super dot equals of other and this dot discount. I'm pretty sure this will work. Yep. And let's just check to make sure that that is indeed the case. And yep, we get true. So that's another use of super. You can also call methods from the super class by using the super dot method name pattern. There's no law that says you have to, but it will also reduce your code. And then that also means if you ever change the way that item works, sale item will pick it up automatically for free. Such a deal. Okay, now the next thing that I wanna move on to is polymorphism and dynamic binding. And this is really quite interesting. So let's go here. I hope I have this um, polymorphism.java. Yes, wonderful. And since I copied and pasted this, I guess I should put some comments here at the beginning. So this maybe I have show that you can assign a subclass object to a superclass variable. There's nothing here that's surprising is going to surprise anybody. I'm creating an item object and I'm assigning it to an item variable. No big deal there. Here's something that's really weird though. I have a sale item. And instead of assigning it to a sale item variable, I'm assigning it to an item variable. Is that actually legal? The answer is, yeah, it's perfectly legal. And in fact, let's run this. Now here's, here's something interesting. What do you think is going to happen? Inside of item one, there's an item object. Well, first of all, let me ask, why is this even legal? Why and can I even do this? The reason I can do it is because of something called polymorphism. If that polymorphism means you can assign a subclass object to a superclass variable. If we want an analogy, and it's a pretty crappy analogy, but I'll go with it. Um, remember the bicycle and electric bicycles we had before? If you have a store that sells bicycles, you can have them sell both regular bicycles and electric bicycles. Because an electric bicycle is a bicycle, it inherits it with extra features. However, it doesn't work the opposite direction. If you have a store that sells only electric bicycles, you can't 
sell a regular bicycle there. So essentially, the super class store can have subclass um, bicycles in it, subclass items in it. Whereas here, a subclass store, the electric bicycle store, can't have super class items in it. And in fact, that's why this is wrong. I can't say I'm going to create a new item and assign it to a sale item variable. All sale items are items with a discount, but not all items in the world are on sale. And in fact, if I do this, it'll say incompatible types. Item cannot be converted to sale item. Now comes the next question. Let's recompile this, by the way, to get rid of that error. As far as the compiler is concerned, both item one and item two are item variables. When I call the two string method for item one, it's going to call two string from the item class. There's no question about that. When I call two string on item two, which one is it going to call? Is it going to call the two string method from item? Or is it going to call the two string method from sale item? We'll find out when we run it. If we see the discount in our output, then it's calling the sale item two string. If we don't, it's calling the items two string method. Let's run it. And we see the discount. And this is what's called dynamic binding. So dynamic binding means that at runtime, um, the JVM will look at the actual object to determine its class and then call the method from the object's true class, no matter what we told the compiler. So there's two phases to this, and this is really important. When I have this, as far as the compiler is concerned, item two is an item object. When we run the program and we have to call this two string method, the Java virtual machine will look at what is inside this object and find out, oh, this variable really contains a sale item object. And therefore I will call the two string method from the sale item object, from the sale item class, excuse me, which will show me my percent sign. Great, this is actually what we want. It's very convenient indeed. However, this leads us to one other problem that we might have. Let's go and look at this. In this one, I have an array of items. Because of polymorphism, my array can contain regular items like the rye bread and the organic salsa. And it can also contain sale items like tomato soup, canned lima beans, and frozen pizza. So I'm going to go to eat through each item in the foods array, and I'm going to print out its name. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. Because I want to, I want, I want to build this up step by step. There's not going to be any problem here. Why? Because get name is inherited in the item class and sale item. 
And therefore, I will always be able to print out the name and the price. Let's compile those and run them. Now, here's something I want to do. I would like to print out the amount that you get discounted for the sale items. So how much are you saving is the question. The amount that you save on a sale item is going to be the food.getPrice times the discount, which is food.getDiscount. Let's compile that. And now all of a sudden I run into a problem. Get discount only belongs to sale item. It doesn't belong to item. And you'll notice here, I've said that foods are an array of items. So now what am I gonna do? I want the discount, first of all, I, since a regular item, rye bread doesn't have a discount, so it doesn't make any sense to try and get the discount for the rye bread or the organic salsa here. I have to say, well, if I have a sale item, then I want to get the discount. To do that, I use the instance of operator. So I'll say if my food is an instance of sale item, then I want to get the discount because only my sale items have them. So let's go back here and on my notes. The instance of operator tells you at runtime, if a variable contains an object of a given class. We're halfway there. The problem is, again, we have the compiler versus runtime. So at runtime, we're gonna find out that the tomato soup is a sale item. We're gonna find out that the canned lima beans are a sale item and so is the frozen pizza. But as far as the compiler is concerned, no, they're still regular items and they don't have a discount. And so the compiler is still going to complain when we go to here to try and get discount. And you'll see it says, no, you can't do it. Okay. So now we've established that yes, we have a sale item. So here's what we're gonna do here. We're going to say sale item, sale food is going to be sale item. We are going to use a cast we're going to force the compiler to treat this item as if it were a sale item. And it's okay to do this. It's safe to do this because we know that our food variable contains a sale item. So forcing the compiler to treat it that way is perfectly okay. Now we can get the price of the sale food and we can get its discount because it's a sale item as far as the compiler is concerned. By the way, let's do a blank line for readability. And now for the sale items, for the tomato soup, the lima beans, and the frozen pizza, it tells us how much we save. For the regular items, it doesn't do that. It's a two-part process. So if you have a polymorphic array, 
and you want to call a method that belongs only to the subclass, you have to first check to see that the variable really does contain a subclass, the subclass variable. And then you have to cast it to make it work. And so essentially we would say if variable is an instance of subclass, and I'm going to say, you could say um, subclass, sub variable is And then I can say sub bar dot. Or we can reduce it to a single line. We can say if the variable is an instance of the subclass, then we can say subclass variable. And we need an extra set of parentheses to make the priority of operations work right. Cast it. And when I say it's cast it to make it work, that's too vague. Cast it to convince the compiler to treat the variable as a subclass variable. So let's go back here to the polymorphic array and let's save this again under a different name. Let's call it polyarray2. And what I'll do here is I'll do it as a single line. First of all, I can say food.getPrice, by the way. Why? Because get price is inherited and there's no problem there. Times sale item food dot get discount. I have to do the cast to convince the compiler. Yeah, yeah, I know this food here is part of the foods array and it's a regular old item, but just for now, Treat it as though it were a sale item. Then at runtime, we're going to check, do we really have a sale item here? And if we do, then this cast will work properly and we'll call the get discount method from the subclass. And again, it works as before. It's a two-step process. We have to do the conversion as a cast for the compiler. And then at runtime, polymorphism will take over and dynamic binding will find the correct method to run. That's pretty much it for chapter 14. But this is a very important thing. Let me take a look at some of these ex exercises here. Okay, I've got the damn polymorphism with those damned bicycles again. Yeah. Um, oh, there's the only two, and one of them happens to be the assignment. Well, I may have to come up with another example for, I may do another um, mini lecture tomorrow, and if I can come up with another example of polymorphism and dynamic binding that goes through the same sort of thing. I will do that. So that's it for tonight. See you all online.